Hello everybody, today we'll talk about low background noise. So background noise or ambient noise is any sound present in the space other than one that's being monitored. Background noise levels are measured to provide a reference point for analyzing a sound source in the environment. So if you want to measure a sound source, you know, if you want to capture the sound, you have to ensure that you are well above the background noise, otherwise you'll end up capturing the background noise itself. So ideally, the background noise must be as low as possible so that you can capture the sound of interest appropriately. If you want to learn more about background noise, you can check the link in the description. So there's something called this logarithmic addition when you have several sound sources present. So the total sound is the logarithmic addition, not the arithmetic addition of all the sound sources. So let's say there are three sound sources, S1, S2, and S3. So when you're subjected to three sound sources, you're going to perceive a single sound, which is the logarithmic addition of all the three sounds. So it goes by this equation where you have, we're going to add the sound sources logarithmically. So if you want to learn more about logarithmic addition as well, you can check the link in the description below. So there's this infamous 10 dB difference that if you have two sound sources which have a difference of 10 decibel or more, the quieter sound is as good as non non-existent. So let's say you have two sound sources, 70 decibel and 60 decibel. So if you add the two sound sources logarithmically, uh, you get the answer of 70.4 dB. Now we'll keep the A weighting aside, we're just focusing on the logarithmic addition, you get something as 70.4. So the only difference, uh, you know, by adding 60 and 70 logarithmically is just a 0.4 increase, which is not perceptible at all. So this leads to a conclusion that if you have two sound sources which are 10 dB apart or more, it's, uh, you know, we can um, as well neglect the quieter sound source. Now, in order to understand what the background noise is made up of, it is important to look at the frequency spectrum. From an SPL perspective, it's clear that the 10 dB difference is sufficient to justify that the quieter sound is not important. But then, we never considered the frequency spectrum, so that is important in this calculation. So, if you have, let's say, a low background noise, you know, it's it, although it may not add up to this... Uh, SPL uh, criteria, but then like it can have some totally different frequency spectra which can be misleading. So let's look at that with an example. So here's a recording of a pump noise. So you can listen to it. So by listening, it's clear that it has some tonal components and it's preferably in the high frequency range. Now let's say we have a low background noise and then it's you know predominant in the low frequency spectrum. So let's listen to it. So as you listened, it's pretty low, but more dominant in the low frequency region. So now let's say we add those two things together. How does it sound like? So for me, it sounds almost the same, but then uh, there is this low frequency content present, which is reflected clearly in the spectrograph. Now, this is not an A-weighted scale, so it's like a DBFS computer scale, but then the point is that this, you know, the spectrograph reflects the, all the frequencies present. So it might lead us to think that, you know, it, the spectrograph sometimes can be misleading to think that there are some low frequency issues with the pump, which is not the case. It's because of the background noise. Now, ideally, when you're recording, you know, your background noise is you know, in good anechoic chambers, it's going to be like 20 to 30 decibel and your sound of interest is like 60, 70 or even higher. At that point, the difference is really huge and then it, it's not going to make any difference. But then the point is, you know, when you have a background noise and the background noise is not just the ambient room noise, it's any sound other than the one that's being monitored. And if that sound is like having a 10 dB difference and a totally different frequency spectra, it's going to, you know, lead you to misinterpret the spectrograph. So to conclude, background noise is not just the room ambient noise, it's any sound other than the one that's being monitored, you know, other than the one that's of interest. So even though the background noise is tend to be lesser, you need to look at the frequency spectra so that you don't misinterpret the results. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.